Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Displaying Tech Review and today I'm going to show you the calibration settings for this amazing piece of technology. It's LG 39QS95QE-B gaming monitor. It runs up to 240 Hertz for gaming including FreeSync Premium Pro and G-Sync from NVIDIA. The calibration settings are comparable to my OLED C7 display from LG and even though this monitor comes with some cross hatching on regular browsing on the operating system whenever you're gaming you don't notice anything. So it's a pretty powerful monitor. So for those of you to have it let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go is we're going to press the back button, obviously, here, and go to the settings. Then on the game adjust, we are going to go to Gamer 1. All settings that I do on Gamer 1, you guys can copy it to Gamer 2 and switch a couple of things if you want. You guys want to do some, a little bit of changes. It doesn't really deviate that much from the color calibration. But it helps whenever you're seeing um, and playing different type of games. So on Game Gear One, you're gonna go uh, depth and sync. You can leave it on, obviously for gaming. So it's a given. On Black Stabilizer, is it starts at 50. Make sure you raise it at 60. There are some reasons for it. I mean, it's it's less darker. It, it brightens up a little bit, so it takes a little bit less of the contrasty, punchy feeling of it. But at the same time, on gaming, it's going to give you an edge because those pretty dark places that makes it more content creator realistic for whatever it's make, made for, uh, on gaming, sometimes are not suitable. So if you have it at 50, raise it to 60. And if you want a little more realistic too, you could drop it to 50, a little more contrasty. Once done, then there's nothing else to do here you go back you drop it to uh, to drop it to picture adjust and then on brightness you put it as 100 if it's there leave it there on peak brightness this one I have it off but if you guys want to see a higher brightness you guys can actually can actually do that see the color comparison But for now, for calibration purposes, I'm going to leave it at off. Then on contrast, you guys are gonna drop it. I think it's at 90 or 85. Drop it to 66. It, it will show you the best, uh, the closest to uh, uh, highlights that you can see, but it doesn't drop much when you're using um, this type of game mode. Then, um, but it'll show you basically what you need to see. So that's more than good enough. On sharpness, I raise it to 60, but you can switch it to however you guys might like it. Then on gamma, this one affects a lot about the picture. You can see that it changes, but I leave it at mode two. It's the closest that is going to give me the 2.2 uh, gamma, which is the most recommended for every day and everything done. Then on color temp, this is tricky. Um, I recommend you guys on manual. Start in manual is actually starts at it actually starts at zero, but drop it to W1 warm one, and but. But if you guys, as, but as you can see, when you put it in manual W1 on manual mode, it won't allow you to touch the RGB colors, which is very imperative to get the most accurate colors on this monitor. So what I would recommend, you go down to, go up to color temp and then choose custom. 
and then on custom it will allow you to reach to RGB and that's where the magic happens and the best color settings then you switch it to go to red and then on red you're gonna drop it to 47 on green stays or gets more neutral and then on blue drop it to 49 and then the six colors we're gonna go to the color management area and on this one it's a little more personal for this monitor but if you want to try to see if it does improve your colors then be my guess on red hue make sure you raise it to 56 reds are kind of high so it actually helps um it's it's kind of reds are kind of a little bit out of whack on on this monitor like basically out of settings and when you raise it to 56 it basically moved the the cursor to a more closer to the line of red of true red and then on red saturation you drop it because it's pretty high you drop it to 45. then on green hue you leave it at 50 but on saturation you drop it to 45. remember we're reaching we're trying to reach uh 130 nits of brightness and from there on you can reach raise your peak brightness to whatever you guys like but on green saturation you're gonna drop it to 45 to get a better greens but as you can see it's still pretty green on the monitor yeah this monitor is not short of colors so that's good and then on green on blue hue you're gonna raise it to 52 then on blue saturation you leave it at 50 on cyan hue you're gonna leave it at 50 but your saturation you're gonna drop it to 48 and then on magenta hue you're gonna raise it to 57 and on the saturation of magenta you're gonna leave it at 50 then on yellow hue you're gonna raise it to 52 and the saturation you're gonna drop it to 48 after doing that on the black levels that you see here that are grayed out that's usually for whenever we're doing hdmi uh an hdmi input like for playstation 5 or xbox series x uh consoles and whenever you can connect it it's only going to give you two options either high and low if you guys go if you guys go to high it's going to show you um it's going to raise the shadows but if you but if you drop it to put it on low it's going to lower the shadows more to give you more deeper gamma settings is um it's good but for gaming that's up to you as a gamer then after that everything should be fine make sure you you do the screen moves screen saver image cleaning before anything of this and then once in a while make sure you maintain the monitor that's it for it guys and i hope whoever has it enjoys it well that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed the calibration settings for this monitor to whoever has it and i really appreciate your support so don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and now and always thank you for watching